everybody, welcome to Grace Tree. Hi there. We have with us again today the author of one of the best-selling books in Christianity history, The Harbinger. Woo! Rabbi Jonathan Cohn is back with us today. And I think it's gone over two million now. <laughs> yeah. Copies of this book. It's like the whole Bible is pointing to this fall, this mm. period of time. Mm. And, uh, I mean, you're going to be where the action is right there in New York. <laughs> right you, next to New York City. You, you see the whole skyline. So w yeah. when it's on fire, we, you're going to see it from your church. That, well, that's how it began. Uh, seeing, we could see 9-11. That's when it began, across the water. Could see the smoke. I had to get to Renata, which we were just beginning to see each other. And she was supposed to be there, scheduled to be there at the building at 9 o'clock in the morning. And the last minute her plans were changed. That happened to several people in our <laughs> congregation. I had to go there, and actually, all the tolls were free because there was nothing happening. I mean, everything was shut down totally to get there. But we could see that, and that's when I first prayed, Lord. And that's when it first began to come, the, the harbinger. Really, the harbinger? Yeah. Well, the very first thing, the very first thing was the, uh, that passage, that this chap, the section, the Lord showed me then the section of Isaiah 9, 10, and 9 and 10, that whole first strike warning. That's what he, that was the first thing that happened that week when I prayed. But I didn't put it all together with that Isaiah 9, 10 scripture. But that's when it be, I, knew, I knew the overall. I knew that overall setting. Later on when I was standing in New York City at Ground Zero and the Lord just, just said, see that tree there? And it was the remains of the tree, the sycamore, said there is a mystery and you have to seek this out. You have to find this. And that's when I had no idea what I was going to find. But that's when the first puzzle piece, next one, it just kept coming and coming and coming. That's how he led me with a harbinger. What did you think as you stood on your property and looked across and saw the Twin Towers on fire, saw them ablaze? Did you actually see them collapse? No, I didn't see them collapse, I saw, I, but I saw the smoke. This was going on for that night, for the next thing. And for the days? smoke going, yeah, for day, the day you could see it from almost wherever you but were. But how could, now listen to me, people, come on now. How could two of the largest buildings in the world disintegrate? How could they collapse? You know, you guys believe in miracles, but I, I, I mean, that's a miracle in a way. How could those buildings, by two airplanes hit them, how in the world could those massive buildings, you were there, your wife was going to be in that tower mm. in a few minutes. My God, my God, my God. God trying to warn our nut. What is the name of those towers? Twin Towers. But what's the, real, the, the, the other name, the real World name? World Trade Center. The World Trade Center. Could that be prophetic? Why, I, would, I think why so. would that be the building? I, I think so. That was, that, they were the symbols of America's preeminence around the world of economy, economic, global, trade, all those things. All those things, when it came down, it struck the sycamore, which was the symbol of the beginning of America's rise financially. So this was a symbol, and then I believe a foreshadow, and this was the opulence of America. This was, the World Trade Center was actually conceived in 1945 when we were at the peak, you know, all that, and it was to be our, we are the new center of the world, mm -hmm. you know. And so this is very symbolic. I mean, and that this, these towers also went up in the year 1973, year of the Shemitah, or that was finished, which is also the year that America began killing its unborn children. Yeah. The towers stood as a symbol of our, our glory, but it was also our shame. They stood for the years that, the, that this was happening. You know? And so I believe it's very symbolic of what that, that was. They, they, were, they were symbolic towers. You know? In the middle of the stock market. Yeah, the financial the district where also America began as a nation, where America was dedicated to George God. George Washington stood all there. That. All that, where the right on that was, spot. I mean, right, right on that right ground, right where they, the, the 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 trees came down. Actually, yeah. hit right there. Right. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> where America was dedicated to God, and where also on a, and also that's the de marking the day when Washington gave the prophetic warning of what would happen if we ever turned away from God. This is so important because if you don't live in this book, the Harbinger, and understand it. You're going to miss what God's saying and what God's doing. That's why several million people have already gotten this book. Yes. And you know what I think is a great idea? <coughs> I think you should do it immediately. 
is get what we call a baker's dozen, which is a, a which gift. Which is 13 to books, and it's for a donation of $100 to the ministry. How many want to be a missionary sometimes? How many would like to preach and you don't preach? All of you can by this. Is, it is written in this book what 9-11 was saying to America. And then the other book we have is The Mystery of the Shemitah. Yes. And uh, this, this one here. And you, you can order this one also. And yes. uh, what do we send these out for? Well, individually, it's $10 a piece. But we have the baker's dozen for both of them, which is for 13 for a donation of $100. Yeah, so you can, you can get them to give out. This, I believe, beside the Bible, these are the two most important now books. <laughs> these are the now books. This isn't a book. This isn't a book deal. This is... This is what God is saying because so many preachers, I helped start the prosperity movement. So I'm not mocking or knocking anybody. I helped put it together in the beginning. We all thought God wanted us to prosper more than anything on earth. That was back in the 70s and 80s and the 80s were the, you know, big, but, huge but prosperity what's happening, time. I believe. Without a shadow of a doubt, the prosperity gospel is what the Bible refers to is the other gospel, another gospel. I believe it with all my heart. And you say, why? Because the love of money is the root of all, all evil. And believe me, it's true. And if people don't wake up and start truth... This is why the rabbis had to write this. This is why he went to the United Nations, the UN. This is why he went to Washington, D.C. And, and, and the federal building and, and all these things, Rabbi. You have been called. And if people, you've got the guidebooks. And so help me, if one of these volcanoes go off, they're talking about about 10 of them right now that could go off at any day. If one of them goes off, Everybody's going to say, my God, what's happening? What's going on? If the things that we believe are going to happen, all the earthquakes, all the things. I, I mean, when I saw Progressive Insurance ran a commercial. Yes, an apocalyptic commercial. About the last day and yes. said, to the end. Yeah, we'll protect you till the end, is what they said. And then and they, they were showing the apocalypse, and they showed, and they said, and they're looting in the streets. You don't hear that in your church. How come we don't hear Revelation in church? We got to watch it on a progressive insurance company commercial. Mm -hmm. We got to go to the movie that you took us to that I didn't even want to go to see. But, you know, I went with my husband. But when I you won't go to sleep in the movie, I'll tell you that. No, 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 the San San Andreas. But I want you to to get these books. Do that. Order the books if you don't have them. And you know, give them to your friends. Get yes. the baker's dozens and pass them out. You know, here, here's the other thing, and we talk about it often, and we're going to get into some amazing teaching with Rabbi in just a minute. But, you know, we, we always talk about getting prepared with all of our, the products that we offer. This is a product driven ministry. Jim has to give back to you because he is he is the ultimate giver but but the but, food is our ministry yes. getting this food is not just our means to support it is what we're to do yes. we're to get you ready and yes. we did have a church ordered a quarter of a million dollars of food last week that quarter of a million amazing. dollars worth of food and they got it for a lot less because we worked it out so they could get it wholesale for their exactly. church. Exactly. But the other thing is you need to have in the, in the times that we're living in, not just preparation with your food and all these amazing products that, that, that we've been able to bring to you, but you need the books. You need the, the DVDs. You need the teachings. It is so vitally important to have all of these with you, you know what? This there. has got to be the best, best book and video deal we have ever made. Oh, $100. Yeah. my yeah. goodness. This is, uh, this is 
the epic Jonathan Kahn package. Yeah. I mean, it. I can't this believe everything. it. I, I, Jer- all, wherever it's, it's Jerry Jones teaching. is, I want to order some of this because this is myself. I can't even believe that we are offering all of this. First of all, I'm excited. Of course, I've read the Harbinger. I've, I've read the, you know, the Shemitah. I've, 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 I've watched your DVDs. I've sat on the set with him. I'm so honored and blessed. But I have to tell you, I am so excited about this one, Rabbi. The Mysteries Volume, however many that is. 13. 13. 13. <laughs> I should have my glasses on because I can't see right now. But, but I'm so excited to, to watch these. You'll get yeah. that for $55 or for the $100. You get everything. You get all the videos, all the books of the rabbi. But That's if you right. want to do just the new mysteries, mysteries volume 13. for a gift of $55. Yes. All right, rabbi. Exciting. One of the messages in here is the mystery or the message of the twilight of the gods. Yes. That's intriguing. Yeah. The, the, uh, the Bible speaks a lot of the gods. Now, God, there's only one God, but, but what, is, what is that about? Uh, when I was growing up, and I was in synagogue, growing up in Hebrew school, they told the story. Now, this story is not from the Bible, but, it's, it, but it, it illustrates a biblical point. And that is that when Abraham was a child, according to this, his, his father made idols. Terah was an idol maker, according to the tradition. And so one day, Abraham smashed all the idols, and he he left except the biggest one. He left the biggest one and he put a stick in the hand of the biggest idol. His father came home and said, what happened? What did you do? He said, he said well, no, I didn't do it. He said, he said, the biggest one smashed all the rest of them. <laughs> and the father said, that's ridiculous. It's an idol. They can't do anything. He said, then why do you make them? So, so now the, the thing is, now that's the story, but it illustrates something. From the beginning, the Jewish people and God's people are called to stand against the gods of the age and stand against idols. Moses had to stand against the gods. Daniel had to stand against, look up, the, the gods, the Maccabees, all of them. But behind the gods are, is the enemy, is the principalities. We war not against flesh and blood. We war against principalities. Yeah. We have to fight. They say that in other cultures, everybody has a fight story, like the Italians will have yeah. a fight story. I did this, this. With Jewish people, not so much. You know, that, that we don't really have fight stories. They say we have almost fight stories. And that, that is, that is that the person said one more word, I would have done it. But nobody knows what the word is. So we, you know, I, I'll, share, I'll share my almost, my, my almost fight story. You know, I, was, I was a kid, and, and the, the teacher blamed me in front of two classes that I was responsible for talking. I was responsible for everybody staying late. So when I got home, there were people, they said there were, um, there's three people come off the bus and say, we're going to beat you up now. Aww. I said, now, what do I do? You know, I said, listen, I said, you know, I would love to get into a fight right now, but... I said, my, I'm wearing shoes. I have to go inside and change them. <laughs> and they said, they said, okay. So I went inside, took off my shoes, sat down, relaxed, watched some cartoons, and that was, that was my <laughs> almost fight story. If they said one more word, though, I would have done it. You know, so <laughs> that, I, don't, I don't look for conflict. I don't look for fights. I don't no, look, you know, you you know but, but we must. You know, Menachem yeah. Begin told me, <laughs> I, with tears in his eyes, he said, all we want is peace. Yeah. He said, we don't want war. We don't want to hurt anybody. We don't want to fight anybody. He said, just basically, if they just leave us alone and let us live, we yeah. want peace. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, they, they so said, that is the Jewish spirit. Yes. Yeah, I think, I think, I think um, uh, you know, uh, Netanyahu said, you know, if we lay down, if the, if the Arabs lay down their, their, our enemies lay down their arms, there'd be peace. If we lay down our arms, there's no Israel anymore. You know, they want there's peace, death, of yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing, yeah, the thing is that the Lord calls us to fight. I, I was once, I don't like conflict, but there's a reason for this. I was, I was in the congregation, and I was playing the piano because I was doing the altar call. At that time, I used to do the altar call. I'm doing the altar call, and a guy walks up on the stage. About, we didn't have really good security. They kind of just watched it. Oh, that's interesting. A guy's yeah, walking on the yeah, stage. Yeah, well, yeah. the stage comes over to me as I'm doing yeah, this. I'm, I'm doing the there. altar call, and he says, um, he says, I came here to kill you. He said, at the service. He, and I'm like, now I'm hitting the wrong notes. I'm, like, yeah. I'm, going, I'm, I'm going, okay, could you wait? Let me just do the altar call first, you know. And I did that. He said, no, no, I, I came here to kill you. I came here. I was on a mission. He said, he was a Satan worshiper. He came to the congregation. He said, as he came, he was, he was struck by God. He, said, stu- he got up on the stage and he kneeled down and he, he, he asked repentance, forgiveness for the entire congregation. Oh. That the, this is not, we, we are in a fight whether we like it or not. When I said yes to go to India, 
all hell broke loose in the ministry. People went crazy. Everything went crazy. By the time I went, when I was heading out to the airport, our, our tickets had disappeared. The, the money had disappeared. There was no tickets. I, I went there. Got, I was on a plane to India. As we take off, I'm watching out of the window, pieces of the engine are falling out. Oh. And they, they made an emergency landing. They went to, then finally we got to India. They take us to the Taj Mahal. We're heading back in a car. It's just like the second day. Everything is foggy. And, and all across the road, there are carts turned over. There are, there, are, there are trucks turned over. It was all over the road. And the guy who's our taxi is racing. We ended up crashing into a truck, being dragged through that time. And, and I looked, you know, later on, I was looking at, at, at uh, things about India. And it said that that very place where we were is traditionally the home of the god Krishna. And Krishna, what he does, according to the mythology, is he turns over carts and four-wheeled vehicles. Now, <laughs> now the, thing is, the thing is that now there's no gods except there are principalities. The enemy uses those things. You know, we went up, as I'm heading up this mountain, I, I had, I, they called me to walk in the, fo the footsteps of Thomas, the apostle, because by tradition, India got the gospel from the Jewish apostle Thomas. So they wanted me to walk, except that Thomas got killed in India, that, according <laughs> to the tradition. And this is a time when Christians were being killed by radical Hindus. So we, it was danger all around. Ev every moment, it was only God's grace that we, we came out alive. But they called me to go up the mountain where he got killed. You know? And as I'm going up that mountain, the guy stops me for a minute. He says, he says God told me, he said, he said, God called me him to go across and preach a message throughout the city. He said, he said, God said there's a curse on India for the rejection of the gospel and the Jewish blood shed in this place. He said, but God said a Jewish man has to come back, go up the mountain, and not get killed. I said, well, that's good. I have to go up and not get killed. <laughs> you know. So I went up, I, I shared, it was a whole thing, and, and that happened. Now, now, at the end, there was so much warfare, but that showed me that was the reason. There's so much warfare because of the stakes are so high. At the end, we saw about 70,000 Indians except the Lord. We will be right back after this special message. I believe a great shaking is coming, great shaking that will change things, affecting America financially, economically, and more than that, and will affect the world. I believe it's unwise not to be ready. You know, if you're going to drive a car, don't you need fuel? Yes. Well, make believe you're a car. <laughs> what is your fuel? Food. If you don't have food, you die. That's as simple as it is. It's going to be life and death. And that's why bread's going to take a whole day's labor just to get one loaf of bread. That's but right. be ready. My Jewish friends have an expression. They'd rather be a year too soon than 10 minutes too late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Our big survival food offers are back. We have teamed with leaders in the survival food industry to bring you a new variety of food while still holding down the cost for you. And so we have now this brand new food for a year for you yeah. and a year for, for two. two. And the time and then, of travel, which is seven years. And so it's food. all ready to mm -hmm. go now. Each of the foods we now offer have been taste tested to make sure you get the best tasting quality food that you expect from this ministry. In each of these offers, you will receive buttermilk pancakes, maple brown sugar oatmeal, chocolate pudding, morning mousse whey milk, creamy chicken and rice, hearty vegetable chicken, chicken noodle soup, creamy stroganoff, fettuccine alfredo, italiano marinara, black bean burger, creamy potato soup, corn chowder, macaroni and cheese, banana chips, instant white rice, and instant mashed potatoes. Don't wait until it's too late. That's yes. right. Don't wait until it's too late. Yes. Be prepared. You can receive the tasty new foods year for you offer for a donation of $600 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 1,096 servings of food. The retail value of this offer is $1,150 and is at a cost of just 55 cents per serving. You can receive the tasty new foods year for two offer for a donation of $1,100 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 2,192 servings of food in eight buckets. This offer has a retail value of $2,300 and is at a cost of just 50 cents per serving. You can receive the tasty new foods time of trouble offer 
for a donation of $3,500 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 7,672 servings of food in 28 buckets. This offer has a retail value of $8,055 and is at a cost of just 46 cents per serving. We can only guarantee the prices for a limited amount of time, so get this new food now. Call 1-888-988-1588 or go online to jimbakershow.com. You can also write to Jim Baker at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri 65615. Thank you for your prayers and support that helps keep us broadcasting around the world. I was in... I was in Nigeria, and in Nigeria, I'm heading to the event to speak, and it's, and it's actually was an event, well, before that, the, the, the car breaks down, the guy, the, my driver leaves me in a place while he goes to get help. As I'm waiting in the car, there are, it gets surrounded by these Nigerians are surrounding the car, and I don't know what to do here, just surrounding it, and I, I'm saying, Lord, just help them not be Muslims, you know, you know, I'm thinking, you know, because I know this, I said, and the guy says, he, he, the first thing he says to me, the leader says to me through the car, he says, we are Muslims. I said, okay, Lord, let them oh. not see that I'm Jewish. <laughs> you, know? you know, blind them. Let me see my, my hair as blonde and my <laughs> eyes blue and <laughs> make the nose go up, you know. You know? And, and it, it, first thing he says, he says, he says, are you a Hebrew? And I said, well, how, did, how do you, why do you say that? He says, you look like a Hebrew. <laughs> you know? And I said, okay, Lord, okay, at least let them not speak about re- Mohammed and religion right now. And the first thing he says is, what do you think about Mohammed? Oh. And they're all, there's a gathering out there. I'm saying, okay, Lord, it's been a good run. I had a good life. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> let me just. Well, and I just said, what do I do? I said, okay. I said, you know what? I said, your religion says that he's the Messiah because it actually says he's the Messiah. They don't understand. He's the Messiah and, and that he's coming back. Well, if he's the Messiah and he's coming back, you need to listen to what he said. He said, you must be born again. He said, that's what God said. He said and I'm thinking, okay, I got, I do that. I got that all out. Okay, now's the end right there. But, but the driver came back and said, we have to go. I said, okay, thank you, Lord. We have to go. I said, and he says, no, no, you don't go. You don't go. I'm thinking, okay, this is, this is the moment. He said, you can't go until you give us a blessing. They all bowed their heads, and I ended up giving them a blessing. Oh. <laughs> I didn't want that, but God forces us into these situations. Mm-hmm. And at the end of that, when I went to the meeting, there were two million Nigerians who prayed to dedicate their life to the Lord. There's, a, there's, a, reason, there's a reason for this. When I, uh, no, when I was in, I went to Honduras, and... They, I, they, the theme was of the, of the gathering was called a mighty wind. And I, I'm going to blow the shofar at the end. There was about 10,000 10, people on the square at night. And I, I said, Lord, I'm, so we pray for the release of the power of God. And, and we have this on film. I'm just, but at that moment, a wind comes sweeping through everything. I mean, massive. They said there was actually a wind circling in, in, the, in the crowd. And what happened is we had our people on the floor, you know, with all the people. And, and these two, two Honduras women came up and the, our people, two, two women, just laid hands on them, and they started twirling and twirling and twirling and twirling and twirling and around, and around, and around and around, and then they went, fell down on the, on the dirt, and the, the women from our group said, said, we're really disturbed. Why is this such a, mo-? it's like that was emotionalism. It's like, that, you know, we don't want emotionalism. We want the, the Lord. We, it turned out that the two women who were there were witches from the area. They were the chief witches from the area. They said they had come to that meeting to stop it, but they came up to our people. They were near our people. The people thought they were coming for prayer. They didn't realize. Did that. They started twirling out of control, out of control, until they were, they were like it said, they looked up at the, they were down on the ground for a minute, and they look up, and it was like something went out of them, like as if it was a deliverance. But nobody meant it. Nobody knew it. And here, there's a just, these are just two little women from our group. But the power that they had with the oh. enemy, the power that they had, the Bible says we war not against flesh and blood. We war against rulers or arches, which is the rulers that shows the power we have. I want to I want to kind of tell you one more thing, and I want to bring this to to where we are here, and that is that when I was in Cuba and I was led, I want to tell you the full kind of background here. I was led. To, I, was, I was in Cuba. A man comes off the street, says says, you know, we had to speak to the Jewish guy, and so they, they speak to me. He says, we were praying the believers of Cuba, and God revealed to us, we, we were on the mountain, said there's a curse on Cuba. It's linked to the rejection of the Jewish people. There were things that happened in Cuba, but any, without going into it, he says that Jewish people have to come back, and the curse has to be removed. Well, I said, I'm Jewish. He said, and that mountain over there, that mountain's dedicated to Satan, 
And he says, but God said it's going to turn from a, bl- a curse to a blessing. There's sacrifice. Saying, all right, Lord, I guess you have this new ministry where I have to go up these cursed mountains. I mean, it's, it, <laughs> it, it, it started at the beginning I didn't, yeah. when I got saved. Yeah. So he said, all right, we're going up the mountain tomorrow. Who knows? I go up the mountain. There's a, God, there's a pavilion where all the, their idols and gods on top of the mountain. There's a man standing outside, and he sees me from across, and he says, he says, Ola Honatan. And I, I didn't know it. So I said, that sounds a little bit like Jonathan. I said, I don't know. I said, go to the guy. I said, I thought. And again, he says, Ola, that, that's hello, Jonathan. I'm thinking, how does he know me? He comes up to us. He says, I've been waiting for you. I said, waiting for you? He's, he says, no, he says, he says, I'm a believer. He said, God told me to come up here. He says, you are coming up here. So, but not that, but he said, God said, he told me to paint a painting, of oil painting on a ceramic plate. And he shows us the plate. And it's a painting of me with a shofar, which I had in my hand that day. Blowing the, with a shofar with a tali. And he, he says, God told me to paint this and p- put it in the pavilion of the, of the idols. He did. He said, in that night, something happened. The, the, the leather oh, that it was holding up broke apart. The plate came down, struck the head of the chief idol god of Cuba. And the next morning, they, the worshipers of these idols open up their pavilion. They find their chief god on the floor with a <laughs> crown removed from her head, literally. It's the god Ochun. <laughs> Next to it is this plate of this Jewish guy with a shofar, and the shofar struck the head. It was just, it was the shofar, it was the edge that struck the head of that. And we have that plate. Now what happened was, he says, the people from the mountain, they took it as a sign from the heavens. And later on, a pastor came from that same city to us, and he said, there's revival in the city. People are coming to the churches, bringing their idols, and saying, smash our idols. We heard what happened on the mountaintop. Oh. There was revival breaking out. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. But that wasn't the end of it, which yes. I haven't shared. What happened is, after that, I was called to go to Africa. And I go to Africa, I'm speaking in a place, and they, they, when I get there, I find that they have painted the entire background with the same image that was on the plate that struck the god. And so the same image of me blowing the shofar. So I said, you know, let me talk, this is Africa, let me talk to them about idols and gods. So I share that story. When I share the story about the striking of the head of the god Ochun, they all, like, react. I'm thinking, like, why are they reacting? And the guy tells me afterwards, he says, well, they all know the god. He said, the goddess. <laughs> said, this state in Nigeria is, is named after the god. It's called Oshun, the entire state. You're in that. God brought me to that state oh, of, this oh. th- of this thing. And then what happened is there's a, there's a man in Nigeria who's called the Oni of Ife. He's like the pope of all these, vood- the, all these Santere, all these religions. I mean, he's the pope. They consider him a god. In fact, senators bowed down to this guy. While we're having a meeting, he comes into the meeting with an entourage. People are, he comes in, but he gets up on the stage and he says, I am renouncing my title as a god. There's only one god, literally. He says it, they take a picture right under where the, his, the, the shofar is on his head where it struck the head of Oshun. And he removes his crown, basically, there. And it made the headlines. I called him up at the end. I said, you want to help me with this? I do the ironic blessing. They snapped the picture, went all over Nigeria. Now, the last thing is the next day, I said, they said, well, there, the shrine of Ochun is here. I said, all right, God, you're going to, I guess we have to go again. Here's another thing. So we go to the shrine of Ochun. It's in the forest, pagan, weird place. And there's a woman in a robe who's following us around from the distance. She's the high priestess of Ochun, that God, that God, it's, it's hit the crown off. And so she's following us. So I said, you know, before we leave, someone tells me, I said, we got to go to her. We got to go. I, so I talked to her at the end, and, and, and we have a translator, and I'm talking to the high priestess of Ochun. And the high priest, I'm sharing, I'm sharing, I'm sharing, I'm sharing, sharing. Finally, at the end, I said, you know what, do you want to accept the Lord Jesus? She says, yes. So here's the high priestess of Oshun, bows her head. I lead in a prayer of salvation. It's the longest altar call I ever did because she was dedicated from an infant to this. I said, I renounce this, I renounce this, I renounce this, I renounce this. And at the end, I look up, she, she, we put, she looks up, she's glowing. We have a picture of her. She's glowing. Her attendants also prayed the prayer. I didn't know that. And then, and she's just glowing. I said, you know, I said, now you don't need this anymore. God, the living God is going to speak to you. God will touch you. He said, here's your, you don't need to, here, you have the oracles of God in this book right here. I said, I just opened it up just as a chance. I said, open up and just, and open it up to the people who dwelt in darkness have seen a great light. Oh, wow. thank you, Lord. Now, what I'm saying here is this. I didn't plan those things. This is the thing. God has called us to stand against the gods of yeah. the age. Yeah. In America, they don't talk about idols, but the idols are just as real now. There's political correctness. There's, but what, the thing that happens is this. You know, you know for Mo, if Moses did not stand, you know, nothing would have happened. 
You know, we cannot accept. You know, the enemy wants all, all to bow down before him. He's the one who wanted Messiah to bow down. And so one of the things you see in the Bible, one, the people of God are always called to that moment where they have to choose, I'm not going to bow down to this. Yes. I'm not, Moses, I'm not bowing down to those gods. Daniel, I'm not bowing down, you know, or the, or the yes. three. Yes. Uh, the Maccabees would not bow down. No. The Paul would not bow down. No. The, the uh, uh, Mordecai wouldn't bow down, you know, and, and the, the Christians wouldn't bow down. That's why they were killed. The reason was, very specific, they would not bow down to say that Caesar was God and offer a sacrifice. Right. So that, all that came from that. Not bowing down is so crucial. We are called to stand, and this is our time. You know, we don't have a choice. You know, the Jewish people, I said, you know, we have almost fight stories. But once they went back to Israel, that was all over. They knew they had to fight. If they didn't fight, they don't live. And, and so in the same way, we are called to fight the fight. We cannot, we cannot give in. And so one of the things I say, first of all, in this age, it's a prophetic age. We're like Elijah. Elijah, would, I will not bow down my knee to Baal. Well, we are, you have all these things where everybody's saying you have to accept it, you have to go along with it, you have to be quiet, you have to, and we, are, we must say, no, I will not bow down yes. to that false god. Yes. I will not bow my yes. knee to Baal. I will, not, I will not give in to political correctness. I will not fear, come what may, I am standing. I will only bow down to the living God. Yes. And no other God, no other idol. I will not serve it. I will not give in to it. I will stand against it. We are called to do that. And when that happens, the reason why Christians are so in, in, the, in the crossfire now is because we're the last holdout that's not bowing down or those who are true. Right. And the enemy hates that. They, 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 that's why there's always fury against those who will not. But this is our time. We must stand against the gods. And not only prophetically, but even personally. That is that the enemy is always trying to make you, make, his, make God's people bow down to fear, bow down to worry, bow down to temptation, bow down to depression, bow down to discouragement, bow down to your past. And you have to say, no, I don't have to take no. this. I don't have to give in to this. I'm going to fight it. I'm going to fight that depression. I'm going to fight that God. I'm going to fight that fear. I'm going to fight that gloom. Yeah. I'm going to overcome because there is only one God. Therefore, I do not have to bow down to the God of fear or the God of anxiety or the God of shame or the God of, of impurity. I can overcome all those things because I have the living God. Mm. And the other thing is, mm. one last thing That's here, great. So is that, good. is that, mm. The other thing you got to know, we got to know about the enemy, and we were sharing this before, that is that when, when the enemy always attacks God's purposes, so he attacks it, he will especially attack before the big things are coming of God. He attacked Moses, Moses when he was a baby, yes. attacked Messiah when he's a baby, he attacked the church when it was beginning, he attacked, he tried to stop Israel from coming into existence by the Holocaust. I mean, that was fury because of what God was going to do. So the thing is, we have to realize something. If you're in God, main thing, just be in God's will. But if you are in God's will and you're being attacked, you're being harassed, you're being, you're being threatened by the enemy, do not fear. In fact, be encouraged. It's a great sign. It means God has something great for you. The enemy doesn't waste his time. So he, he knows what God has for you. Be strong and overcome, and you're going to enter into what God has. Oh, this is, this is amazing. Ah. Wow, so this, this whole message is in this volume that you can order today, yeah, too. Yeah, I can just touch on it. But the that's Twilight the oh. of the Gods. I love and, it. Uh, we need the power over it. Because he said we can have the power over these yes. evil spirits. Yes. And, you know, it says, I will fear no evil. What does that mean? You know, we say it. But I will, I, you are, we are not supposed to fear any evil. Because then we're giving, we're giving credit to it. We're saying yeah. it's stronger than God. Giving place you know, to it. I, yeah. Or, I will fear yeah. no evil. I will not give it. Evil is going against me. I will fear only God. And, and therefore, because he's on the throne, not evil. That yes. problem is not on the throne. Yes. I'm not going to bow down to the problem. I love it. Yeah. Not yeah. bow down. And I think one thing, um, Rabbi, you know, you know, we talk about idols and yes. all of this. The thing is, I think so many, I believe, so many Christians think about idols and idol worship as in, you know, the Bible days yeah. of putting up, you know, the gold and stuff, yes. all of that. But what you just spoke about are the idols that mm -hmm. are that are so-called in our lives, the fear, the, the worry, the anxiety, the depression. The, I mean, that yes. literally, those are idols. We don't think about it as such. I mean, even that, we might think, okay, money, but, but we know that. But even that, an idol is, number one, anything you're, you're, you are focusing on more than God. Ah. You know, whatever you're valuing more than God, whatever you're dwelling on all the time, whatever you're looking at all the time, whatever is 
prompt is, is motivating you to do what you're doing, whatever is prompting you, whatever you're afraid of, or yeah. whatever your, your reverence, or your, all those things are idols. So we have to have no idols in our life. We have to be free of that, yes. that we can serve God. Yes. You know, the, 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 the Hebrews had to come out of Egypt. Why? He said, that they may serve me. In order to serve God, we've got to get rid of the idols. O always, always. But that's also an idol too, even things like fear, even things like depression, even things like anxiety, even things like that thing, that problem we're focusing on. Right. All these messages oh. are on the new volume 13. Order it today. You, if you order the hundred dollar, you get the mystery of the Shemitah, of the <laughs> harbinger, yes. the video, yes. uh, the great, great video yes. of the the uh, mystery, yeah. mystery the unlocked, unlocked video. Oh boy, and you also receive all where we are right now. Yes, and you receive the entire tour of Israel as well, and that's all for a donation of $100 to the ministry. Or you can have just no. the uh, Mysteries Volume 13, yeah. which is those nine DVD set for a donation of $55 Th to the ministry. This is probably the one of the most amazing offers of video and audio and r the, the things that uh, uh, are written as well, his books. So order the right now. We'll be right back after this special message, and we're going to talk about the mystery of the ghost kingdom. So don't go away. We will be right back after this special message. When you need a portable emergency power system that is ready at a moment's notice, the fuelless generator is exactly what you're looking for. If I thought an EMP bomb was coming, or if I thought there was going to be a big storm or a big problem, I would want one of these in my house. Something is going to happen in 2015 that is going to change how we view our, our system, how we view life. And when that something happens, you're not going to be able to get a fuelless generator. It's going to be impossible to get a generator. I'm really enthralled with this device. It's, it's, a tech, it's an elegant technology. With every storm we've had this winter, I just pull the thing out, I set it up in the living room, I run some extension cords into other rooms. Uh, I even ran my 60-inch television off it. Call 1-888-988-1588 or write to Jim at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. It's an, such an incredible offer. For example, this is for a donation of $2,500 to the ministry. And the unit just by itself is a retail value of $2,500, but you're also going to get a solar panel, which is a retail of $500, then the 20-foot extension cord, and that retails for, for over $50, and then the crank, which is a retail of over $200. So it's an absolutely incredible savings. A lot of people ask me to endorse stuff and all that. This is the only thing I have been endorsing like this. I fully believe in this product. Wow. But can you imagine in the pitch darkness that you have light? You can also go to the website, jimbakershow.com. Thank you for your continued support that helps keep us broadcasting around the world. Yes. Rabbi, one of the messages in your new series, the mystery volume 13, is the mystery of the ghost kingdom. That really intrigues me also. You have some real mysteries here. <laughs> Sound like Hardy Boy books to me, you know. Mm -hmm. So the mystery of the ghost kingdom. Yeah. What does that mean? <clears throat> well, th this is linked to Daniel. Let me, let me, let me start this way. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, there was a movie called it's a mad, 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 mad world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was very funny. I saw that <laughs> yeah. one when I was At a kid. At one point, they're, they're looking for this treasure, some of you, and they're looking for it, and they say it's under the big W. And they're walking around this park looking for it. They're going all around, and right there, it's in front. But it's so big, they don't see it. I mean, it's right there in their faces, <laughs> but they don't see it. Well, this is a prophetic, I want to share a prophetic end time mystery that is like that big W. In other words, it is so big, and we have, it's right there, and we for the most part, have not seen it. This is going to be a kind of a whole new take on Woo. it. And I'm beginning with Daniel, Daniel 2. Daniel sees the statue of the kingdoms that represent the four great empires of the world, the last one being the fourth one is the, is the Roman. It's the final form. It, it's going to be the end time kingdom as well. So he sees all that there. Now, this is what he says about that fourth kingdom. Daniel 2 says this, verse 33, his legs were of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. 
part. So, he, so the Roman Empire or the, is the, represented by the legs and then the feet. And then verse 40 says this, The fourth kingdom shall be as iron, as iron breaks in pieces and subdues everything, all things. As iron breaks all these things, it will break in pieces and bruise. And where you saw the feet and the toes, part of the potter's clay and part iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it of the strength of iron, as much as shall the iron mixed with the clay. And as the toes of the feet were part iron, part clay, the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And where you saw iron mixed with the miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but shall not cleave to one another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. All right, Rome. The traditional view of prophecy is this. Rome was the ancient kingdom. It fell in ancient times, long gone. We're waiting for when it will reappear. Now, there is tr that is true. That, that is true. Much can be said, but there's a whole other realm of this that is true that I believe we've missed. In fact, the fourth empire is already here. And let me, let me share. And let me share this. Here's the key. First key is the, the, the legs are divided. It's a divided, the, and then the toes, it says it's a divided kingdom, divided empire. And so it is divided in, in clay, iron, divided with the legs, divided there. It's an empire of division or duality. Two things, Rome, iron and clay. Rome was made up of the Romans, was also made up of peoples from all nations. Rome was divided literally into east and west. It became the eastern empire and the western empire. Now, Rome was also, is also divided in time. It stood then in ancient times. It will stand again in the end times solidified. So it's a divided essence is what we see here. What if the fourth empire, Rome, didn't end, still exists in a different form? It will exist in a, soli a solid form at the end. But what if iron breaks into pieces, but clay, it says, is broken? So it breaks, but it also it breaks other things, but mm. it also gets broken. And by doing that, it subdues the world. What, it, what is that? There are different ways of subduing the world. What if the Roman Empire, by actually breaking, has been part of subduing the world? Rome is gone, or is it? The picture we have is Rome falling in 476 B, B, uh, AD. Uh -huh. The German, Germanic tribes come in, wipe it out. But the, what people don't know, by that time, Rome was already made up, the army was already made up of Germanic tribes of Rome. Not, though, much did not change when that happened. In fact, they even have a hard time making a real date of if it ended. It actually, the barbarians, who we say took over, continued to recognize the Roman Empire and said they are under the Roman Empire. Medieval civilization, Middle Ages, feudalism, was actually a carryover of Rome. It was just Rome breaking apart. It was the same mm -hmm. thing. The, la the language of Europe then was Latin, which is the language of the Roman Empire. It did not stop. 800 AD, Charlemagne is crowned emperor of the Romans. The holy. This is long after Rome was supposed to be gone is crowned the Holy Roman Emperor. Uh, Rome will remain the center of civilization for, for over a thousand years. Most of us learned in school about what we call the Renaissance. What's the Renaissance? The Renaissance is the rebirth of what? It's the rebirth of Roman culture. It was all about Rome culture infusing everything. Nine, the year 951 AD, the Pope, the Pope crowns the German emperor or conqueror Otto as king of what? The Germany? No of the Romans. He's one of, one of those, it starts the, whole, the, the Holy Roman Empire. We've heard about the Holy Roman Empire. This, this is a continuation of Rome. It's happening. And one of those Roman, Holy Roman Empires is called Charles V. One of his little pieces of land was part of America. Now America under this, this emperor of Rome. Now one, the, what, this is the fourth beast, but this is, it, ha, it goes much farther. What's happening is that Rome actually did not end, I mean, in one sense, one sense, it spread through the world. It's been spreading through the world. Wow. It's been leavening the world. You can travel the, cap the world and look at capitals of the world, and all over you'll find their buildings are made to represent Rome, all over the world. Roman law is the basis of much of law that we still get, is still all over the world. When the, the Holy Roman Emperor, Emperor fell, or the, the, the Empire fell, out of it was born Germany. The, the leader of Germany was called what? The Kaiser. What is Kaiser? It's Caesar. It means Caesar. Oh. Kaiser is simply the German way of saying Caesar. So here you have the Holy Roman Empire, then you have that. 20th century, the century of fascism, totalitarianism. Where does that begin? Begins with Mussolini. What was he trying to do? 
What was it? It was the revival of Rome. Hitler followed it for Nazi Germany. Where do you get the word fascism from? The Roman fascis, which is a, the symbol that Rome came up with by which they, where they spoke of total absolute authority. That all, that's all, again, Rome. The, here's another thing. The Roman Empire morphed into a spiritual form, which we know as the Roman Catholic Church. In a spiritual yeah. form, the popes reigned, they, they ruled as what? What's their title? Pontifus Maximus. What's that title? That was the title of the Caesar of Rome. The emperor of Rome was the Pontifus Maximus. They took that from the same leader of Rome. They, the diocese, that's how Rome divided up Rome into diocese. Well, the, through the Catholic Church, it divided up, the world has been divided up as the Roman Empire. I'm not saying people in the Catholic Church know this or, or that's the point, but this is all the same, the continuation of the same thing. What language? Latin. The, from Rome comes the idea of the global state. You know, the fourth kingdom, you know, actually from the pieces of the fourth kingdom, which are, became France, Spain, England, and others, they colonized the entire world. The entire world, you, in other words, Rome broke up into France, England, and they each became an empire that subdued the entire world. I mean, you know, you have, you have the Spanish Empire, the French Empire, the British Empire. The British Empire, just one little piece of Rome, subdued one-fourth of the entire world. Some say one-third of the world. In other words, Rome has already been spreading and has been subduing culture, has been changing culture. One of the colonies from that little fragment of Rome is America. Colony, which that word, even the word comes from Rome. It, and, you know, our build, you go to, go to Washington, D.C., and you'll see, look at the buildings there. The Capitol building is modeled yeah. after the Roman pantheon. The pantheon means the, the temple of all gods. That is our Capitol building. What does it rest on? It rests on Cap Capitol Hill. What's that from? That's from Capitoline Hill, named after the Roman Hill. You know, you can look at the Supreme Court building, same thing. It is the Roman thing. Even the word, the, the, what's our, our highest body of ruling? The Senate. Where's that from? Rome. The president, the word president comes from Rome. You know, all, the language of Rome, Latin, has, in one form or another, has covered the world. If you speak Spanish, that's basically Latin, just morphed. It morphed into Spanish. You speak French, it's Latin, morphed into, morphed into French. You speak, you speak Portuguese, more, it's Latin. It's the Roman language, morphed into that. Romanian, same thing, all that. English, we say English. You know, English, what is English? English is Latin mixed in with German. In other words, it's <laughs> Rome and the barbarians come together. It's the iron and the clay. Mixed and so, together. I, mixed together, iron oh and the clay, and it's covered the world. The language of Rome. When did Rome fall? We said, we said 476 AD. Not exactly. Rome split into two, just like the legs of the statue of Daniel, and the east and west. Well, the western empire, we said, has continued in all these forms. What happened to the eastern Roman Empire? Just as important. The, listen, to the other half of when Rome fell, this is history, the eastern empire, Byzantium, fell in the year 1453. It was existing up to the time of just before Columbus. Rome never ended. The Eastern Roman Empire, actually from that came all Eastern Europe. They were descended from the Eastern part. Rome, all these, the Eastern, they, they, they took the alphabet. They, when the Eastern Roman Empire fell, the niece of the last Roman emperor went up north and married a prince of another power that then said, we are now the third Rome. What nation was that? Russia. Russia was the third Rome. In fact, its, its symbol is the double-headed eagle, which is from Byzantium. If you go from the, Rome, the Eastern Roman Empire, if you go throughout Eastern Europe, you'll find that symbol all over. So the thing is, and now, the cold, when you had the Cold War, get that, the Cold War, you had the entire, you had the world divided up into two, and who, was, who were the centers of this Cold War? You had America, which is descended from the Western em Roman Empire, and on the other side, you had Russia, or Soviet Union, descended from the Eastern Roman Empire. So it's as if this global, getting ready for this global state, it's already there. And so and now we're watching the actual remains of the Fourth Empire, the, uh, Europe, coming together. And how did, you know, the, the, the European Union, how did they come together? What was the treaty? It's the Treaty of Rome. Rome. Now, and now we're waiting for the appearance of the Fourth Kingdom. Well, note a mystery. When Israel... 2,000 years ago, Israel was a, was a nation together. The Jewish people were fragmented. Rome spread the Jewish people all over the world. The, the Jewish nation was scattered over the earth. 
Well, God, whatever you do to Israel happens to you. So what happened is Rome, God scattered Rome all over the earth in the same way, in these forms. And so what's happening now is the Jewish people are coming back together, and as Israel's coming back as a nation, so Rome will come back in its, from fragments to come back as that, na that empire again. But the point is, it has, the mystery has already been continuing. It's been in our midst. We didn't, may not have realized it. It's happening all over the world. And it's being ready for that time. You know, as, and so if, if Israel, if Rome is returning to its, its original form, if, if Israel is returned to its original form, that means the church has to return to its original form. In other words, if this is all coming to the way it was back then, we have to come back, the church has to come back. And then what's happening is the true church. I mean, there's an apostate church. But the true church, those who stand strong, we are, God is taking the church and bringing it back to its original form. What's that? It's not the status quo culture. It's a radical faith. It's the, it's the counterculture. It's a prophetic faith. Wow. It's, the, it's the underground faith. It's the, rat, it's the on fire faith of Paul and Peter. Yeah. That's what he's bringing back to. What else do we know about what's happening in the church? Church, has been, for 2,000 years or much of the age, it's been joined to Rome. Well, now, but in the beginning, it was Jerusalem. Well, now God is having the church move more and more to Jerusalem, more and more centered on Israel, more and more joined together, back to its roots, back to, you know, you never heard the word Yeshua for 2,000 years, that's back in the church. You never had Jewish believers back in the, that's, that, that's happening again. You never had Jew and Gentile together again. God is bringing us back to the form that we had. And that's a good thing. And even yes. persecution, that's part of the mystery. And so the thing is that God wants to use all these things that we are more than a match for what happens at the end times. That if the world is taking its original form, we are going to take the form of the apostles, the disciples, the first believers of God in the beginning of the age that overcame the Rome, overcame the world. That's what we are here coming back to be. God is calling us to be part of the mystery. It is not a thing to fear. Do not fear the future. God's already in the future. We've got Jesus is waiting in the future, but also our prophetic destiny is waiting in the future. God has called us to play our part for such a time as this. Woo! Um, Wow. Do you believe the Antichrist could come out of the Roman Empire, this Roman revised Roman? Yes, yes. I mean, I know there's different views, of course, and, you know, and some will talk about the Islamic thing. Well, well, that was also part of Rome. Parts of that was part of Rome as well. Um, the Mediterranean was part of Rome. The North Africa was part of Rome. Uh, and, but certainly Western Europe is, was, you know, was part of Rome. Yes, I do believe that. It says in Daniel, it says, the people of the prince who shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So who destroyed the city and the sanctuary? We talked about this at the beginning. Titus, the Romans did. So it has to be, some, somehow it has to be linked to Rome in some way, in some way. You know, so one way or the other, yes. Mm. Yeah. This is such powerful teaching. It's so uh, powerful, teaching. wow. And America, people always say America is not in the Bible. But we've got to be there somewhere. So well, we're we not, are part of the... Well, we're part in, I think, in several ways. I believe, I mean, there are people who believe certain things are, but we have to say there's no specific reference saying specifically America as the head of nations, which means something. doesn't mean it's not important. I mean, it, it means that we will not end up being the head of nations is what it means. In the end times, we're not the leading thing. There are different references that people believe can be linked to us and we're part of the picture certainly but i believe what that's telling us is we have to go from being the head of the nations to not being that where there's another head of nations i believe that's what we're on the verge of and that that's could, what that all could the begin stuff we're in, in months and weeks could, could you know but i believe we're going there and one of the signs is look at what's happening america's falling america is losing its preeminence is lo all in every way morally spiritually and then economically ultimately it's, it usually starts economic and then military comes after but we're already watching these things happen we're already watching it you know and, and so it's all i believe that's all coming according to end time prophecy hide me under the shadow of your wings that's Kanoff. same thing that he wore it's, it's wings but it's also that you know you you will i will shelter you under my wings under my wings that's that so the the, all, the whole thing bringing it home is god came all the way from heaven to earth to our lives not so we'd stay distant but so we would he could become touchable it's the way back 
to Eden. He is the way back to paradise. He's the way back to healing. He's the way to get out of the curse. Touch him and the curse goes. Touch him, it's like you're going back to Eden. Through him, the curse is gone. The infirmity is dried up. The crippling is gone. The emotional things are gone by touching the wings of God. Yes. The wings of God. Yes. 1-888-988-1588, toll free, or post office box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Or our new expanded website with all the ordering right there. You can just go right there, right, Lori? Right. JimBakerShow.com. As simple as that. God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for today. Bye-bye. We love you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, my friend. You were great. You were terrific. My, my great. Powerful. My powerful. The enemy wants all, all to bow down before him. He's the one who wanted Messiah to bow down. This is a real thing we're in. This is a real fight. It's and when real. the end times go, gets, it gets, we can progress, it's going to get even more so. You have all these things where everybody's saying you have to accept it, you have to go along with it, you have to be quiet, you have to, and we, are, we must say, no, I will not bow down yes. to that false God. Yes. I will not bow my yes. knee to bow down.